What's up, guys and gals? Mirror Mask here. We're going to head over to Dothan today, go uh, meet up with Todd, and we're going to ride up to Beasley Honda and check out some of the stuff there and ask them about a couple of trails we saw on an aerial map and, you know, see if it's okay for us to uh, ride there. So uh, you guys come along with me. <laughs> Hi guys, we're here. We're gonna meet up at uh, Burger King here, and then we're gonna ride up. Uh, I guess I don't know. It's kind of chilly today, but um, I wore my Montreal 2.0 uh, by Oxford, so I'm pretty warm. And uh, I'll catch up with you guys after we eat. What's up, guys and gals? Mirror Mask here. We're in Dothan. Just filled up with some gas. I'm gonna head on to Ozark, Alabama, where we're gonna go to Beasley Honda, hang out with them guys for a second, ask them if they know about those trails. Oh, I guess I didn't tell you. I was looking on Google Maps. Oh shit. What the fuck? Going to damn gear. time to change my damn oil man my neutral's getting kind of weird <laughs> bitch went right back into neutral man <laughs> I, I downshifted and it went to neutral yeah yeah when well, you hit it after that car right there but uh yeah guys we uh saw some trails on google maps some power line trails and um they're up around ozark and we figured well i don't know who to ask so maybe we can just go to beasley honda there because those guys uh they're adventure riders that work there so we figured we'd go ask them like hey are, are these okay to ride on are there trails around here what's going on you know so that's the game plan right now. Yeah, I had a guy, um, I got in contact on Craigslist and he uh, he had this KLR 650 that he had listed, a 1999 one. And um, he was like, hey, you know, I'm looking for a small bike. So I figured, he didn't say trade, he just said I'm looking to get a small bike. So I messaged him and I was like, hey, you know, I've got an XT225. Now keep in mind, I love this bike. I don't want to sell it. But all I'm saying is, if the price is right, I'll sell it. So what I was hoping to hear was, you know, hey, yeah, here's an offer. But he was like, <laughs> uh, uh. 
that damn wind sucks right now but he was like yeah um i could do an even trade on that and <laughs> and um i was like uh, 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 like it threw me off that's not what i was expecting and so I was like, well, you know, I might come down there and look at it and everything, just trying to be polite. Um, but I ended up, I, I decided I wasn't gonna go. Oh man, I wonder if we can ride right there. But um, anyway, so I was looking at these photos and man, there's like rust all around. I mean, the frame looks really good shape, but where all the bolts connect at, there's like rust around it. Not on the bolts, I mean around the, the holes for the bolts. And I was like, well, that could be surface rust. Uh, you know, maybe you could blast that off and, and paint it. But I was like, I don't know, some of these spots look pretty bad. So yeah, that, I kind of talked myself out of that. Because um, like I said, if the price is right, I'll sell this. But I didn't message him with the intent to trade. I messaged him with the intent to see if he maybe would wanted to make an offer on my bike. And he just kind of caught me off guard and was like, oh yeah, I, can, I might trade even for that. I was like, ooh. But uh, anyway, yeah, so instead of going down there, we decided we we're gonna go up to Beasley Honda today go north and that way I don't run into that dude because he already saw photos on the bike um, but yeah he, he liked it and everything I mean it's a badass bike I mean this bike will surprise you if you don't uh, know much about this bike or you've never ridden one before I'll go ahead and tell you like this thing the power on this little XT225 will surprise you because you, in your head you think well that's only like 225 cc like yeah but it's 20 horsepower and 19 nm of, of torque so basically 20 and 19 horsepower and torque but the bike only weighs 235 pounds you see what i'm saying um some of the uh, 250cc model bikes, you know, that are 20 horsepower, but weigh 80 pounds more. You see, that's 80 less pounds. I got to pull with the same amount of horsepower and the same amount of torque. You see what I'm saying? Like this, this bike will, it's not like, it won't loop on you. It's not that kind of power. I'm sure you could gear it like that with some sprockets, but, um, but no, it's, it's got some get up and go power. A surprising amount. But yeah, dude, there's another damn trail right there. What the hell? There's got to be somewhere around here we can ride. Because we see adventure riders in Dothan head this way all the time. There's got to be some place around here that they're riding at. But see, you know, me and Todd are new to the whole dual sport and adventure riding scene. I mean, we've, you know, ridden bikes and stuff for years, but we're new to all this. You know, we, we kind of want to cut our teeth on some damn dirt. You know what I'm saying? Some trails, but we're having trouble finding some trails because it just apparently where we live, there's just not a lot of parks and state parks and places that we could, uh... oh, he's talking. I thought he was talking, yelling at me. There's just not a lot of places for us to go that we know about. So we're kind of trying to find out where some of these places are. But um, we asked Jody at uh, Circle City Cycles and he said a lot of people kind of go over towards the Enterprise area, um, but he may, they mainly just ride dirt roads. So I was like, or, or dirt roads around here is what he said. So I was like, okay, well, that's cool. Um, I don't mind riding dirt roads, but I kind of want some trails too. So I figured we'd go up here to um, Beasley Honda. <laughs> go up here to Beasley Honda and um, ask them.
Yeah, that power line trail that I saw on the aerial view on Google Maps, it's like, it's probably over 100 miles long. And it's just a straight line. And there's like rivers to cross, there's hills to climb, there's, there's all kinds of stuff on it. And it just looked really freaking awesome looking. So I was like, man, we gotta find out if we can ride on that, or at least part of it or something, because that just looks sweet. And it's cool because it's just a straight line, you know what I mean? So there's no chance of get, us getting lost while we try to learn how to do the whole off-road adventure thing. And um, yeah, it's just a straight line. So that'll be awesome if we can find a spot that we can go in on and ride some. <laughs> <laughs> y'all see that bag just floating in the air <laughs> it was just hovering there <laughs> you, know, you see it floating <laughs> alright so we'll be coming into Ozark pretty soon Beasley Hunt is like, these guys are really cool up here. I mean, I've been up here many times um, just browsing bikes and window shopping, you know. I wasn't really intending to buy anything at the times that I would go sometimes. And, you know, some of these places, I'll put it this way, some of these bike places you go into, and if they sense that you're not there to buy anything, they just walk off from you. Or they don't sit around and chat with you or anything like that. they don't build any kind of rapport or nothing but these guys although i don't i'm not close like that with them i don't know them by name but um i just know them by their face when i see them but um they're always cool with that you know they'll sit around and just sit on the bike and sit on a scooter and just have a conversation you know what i'm saying they're not trying to pressure you into buying anything and if they sense you're not going to buy anything they don't just walk off they're just real cool like that um, so hopefully they'll know of some places but uh that's it guys I'll, I'll um I'll flip the camera back on in a bit we got I don't know probably 15 more minutes to ride so I'll catch you guys in What's up guys and gals, we're back. We just hung out in Beasley Honda for a little bit. I didn't want to go in there and film or nothing, but there it is right there, Beasley Honda. These guys are amazing, Ozark, Alabama. They're super friendly. Checked out some helmets while we were in there. Um, I'll be honest, we sat on a bunch of bikes in there, which we always end up doing. And um, I'll go ahead and tell you, I sat on the KLR650. Um, the DRZ, I, I sat on a bunch of them in there. And I'll be honest with you, that shit's way too tall for me. Um, I, I'm 5'9", I'm I have a 32 inch inseam. Look, I know I can lower them and everything, but I'll be honest with you, if I can't touch my tippy toe on both sides, or if all I can do is touch one tippy toe or something like that, that shit's just too tall for me. And, I'll be honest and I'll tell you why. Now you may say, well, oh, I mean, you're just being a wimp, mirror mask. Well, here's the thing. I've got back problems, right? And for me, sometimes when I get in a hairy situation, I have to drop down low and put a foot on the ground, like immediately. Um, Cause like my back, it's not that my back gives out, it's that my back will have like a sharp pain and not lock up, but like freeze on me for a second. And so I have to, I have to be able to like, not wreck the bike when that happens. Huh? What? Yeah. I didn't know what he was talking about. Um, so yeah, that to me, it, it's important that I'm able to put my feet on the ground. It's not a beginner thing. It's not a noob thing. It's a simple safety thing for me. Or at least in my head it is. I feel comfortable. 
when I'm able to, uh, you know, get out of a situation when my back freezes like that. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the problem is. I don't know if maybe I'm, I've, I've got herniated disc or, or what. I don't know what the deal is, um, but that's just how it is. Motherfuckers, we're trying to get over. If you let us get over, then you can go around. There you go. Stupid people in Alabama traffic. Ridiculous. Really? You're going to fly around us just to go to the gas station? All right, cool, whatever. Yeah, so anyway, that's that's to me. Now, I don't, I don't know about Todd. Todd's, I think, 5'10". I think he's an inch taller than me or something. But for me personally, that's why I just... I don't want a bike that big. Um, you know, picking it up is not a problem when it's 235 pounds, but when it's 450 pounds or 400 pounds or 300 and something pounds, all of a sudden, you know, that's that's a lot of weight for me and my back. Um, I know, you know, some people may say, well, Mirror Mask, you don't need to get into adventure riding if you've got back problems. I'll say to them, uh, no, <laughs> you know, like just because I got back problems doesn't mean I, have, I need to stay away from adventure riding. It just simply means get a bike that you're comfortable on. You know, I have no problem riding a 250 or a 225 in this case. Look, if the bike will do 75, I'm cool with it. That's all I need. You know, I don't need anything faster than that. You know, I, I used to go way faster than that back in the day, you know, in my late 20s, early 20s, all that stuff, the, my, my sport bike phase. Yeah, you know, I know what speed is, and I know that I've outgrown it. Uh, you know, it's, it's as simple as that. The older it gets, sometimes you just say, you know, I want to try something else. Uh, the street's cool. Been on the street 15, 16 years riding. Now I think, well, I want to try the adventure riding thing. So, get a bike you can handle. That's my advice. You know, everybody in the world on the internet will tell you, you need a KLR 650 for your beginner bike or your adventure bike, or you need a DRZ, or you need, you know, a 450 or a 650 or a 600 or a 300 or a 350 or whatever. Now, I don't even know if there's bikes in all those categories, but I, you get my point. I'm just saying, everybody on the internet will tell you what you need to have in order to adventure ride. The truth is, what you need is something you can handle. You know, handle not necessarily in skill level, because there's some very skilled riders that I've known in the past that have medical conditions, and, you know, they just can't handle bigger things. I've known people that have had to go from bikes to scooters simply because they just, you know, either they've outgrown uh, not outgrown, that was, that's not the word I meant. They, they've outgrown life, I guess. They've gotten too old to handle bigger bikes, so they get scooters. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? I love scooters. Why do I love scooters? Because I can ride a scooter for, for days, son, for days without a, a affecting my back at all. Like, they're just really freaking comfortable to me. And I love them, you know, they're awesome. Uh, but, until they come out with a really badass scooter that doesn't cost 11 grand like the Honda XADV, um, I'm gonna try my adventure stuff on a, a smaller dual sport. And you know, I'm perfectly fine with it. But that's my little rant on that. But um, I'd never, you know, I'd, I'd set on KLR 650s in Dothan at our place, but they had a bunch more bikes there. Um, options to choose from than our place does in Dothan. So I, I pretty much just set on everything. Some of them just too tall, just hands down, too tall. Um, some of them definitely got to do some aftermarket work on the seats. I sat down on that, what is it, KLR uh, 250 and I plopped down thinking it was going to be a little bit softer than it was. No, man, I about knocked the wind out of myself. I hit my nuts so hard on that seat. That bitch was like a brick. Definitely would have to mod that one. But see something like that KLR 250, I can handle that. 
you know, I can handle that size. Um, even the, the CRS they had in there, I think it was 250Ls. I could handle something like that. And I think that'd be perfectly fine. But something as big as a KLR650? Oh, hell no. I, I, mm -mm, I can't do that. I can't do that. But, um, I'm gonna, uh, kick it off right now, guys. And I'll turn it back on when we get to Dothan, because we got a little ways to ride. It was a little bit further than we thought. So I'll see you guys shortly. All right, guys. We just left Wiley World. Went in there to see if they had like a little foot tire pump. Because I want to find a really small one that I can take with me. I don't want like a big one. Oh my god, Dothan traffic sucks. Nobody uses blinkers here. Let me shut that visor so it's not so loud. What a Hop 250, I say, I'm impressed, man. It's breaking in, it's getting broke in. Um, when we first took it out the other day, you know, it topped out at 50. Um, got it up to 65 today. Todd's Hawk 250 in front of us there. We went to Beasley's and we found out that there are definitely some trails. There's a matter of fact, there's one in Mariana. And Mariana's not even that far from us, so I was kind of really pleased to hear that. There's another one way up in, um, where the hell did he say? Andalusia? I think he said Andalusia. Which, that's a little ways from here. But the one in Mariana, that'd be awesome. Yep, now we gotta go. He just got a phone call. He's gotta go pick up his niece and nephew, drop him off, and then uh, it's back to riding. So we're gonna hit up his house real quick. Um, and uh, he'll go pick them up and, and, and drop them off and then hop back on the bike and we'll continue. Uh, we were just talking about it before we hopped on the bikes when we were leaving Walmart. Like, I hate that once again, as you guys can see, it's a freaking cloudy day, man. Like, we were talking about why is it every time it's, we got time to go ride, it's like cloud cover. Like, the videos look so dull looking when it's cloud cover. Like, I'm so ready for it to just be a really sunny, beautiful day. You guys can really see what beautiful South Georgia looks like on a good sunny day instead of this I like freaking London every damn day. Just dreary looking. Huh? I know, dude. Why can't everybody just like, oh, it's green light, and go at the same time? <laughs> I bet half these people are on their phone. I bet half these people are on their phone, yeah. texting, just sitting there like yeah, texting. Yeah, I don't know why people don't do that, man. Like, when the light turns green, if everyone's paying attention, and everyone's looking at the light then you see when it turns green and when it turns green everybody just start easing on the gas a little bit and move forward like a train water world dothan alabama um at that park right there well, hang on making sure that fire truck wouldn't buy to flip the sirens on um this park back here there used to be an mx track either an mx or a bmx I, i'm wanting to say it was mx and it got converted to a bmx i don't know it was a long time ago it hadn't been there in a while but yeah that's where um that track used to be long long time ago
now there's like nothing here Yeah, I could yeah, I could smell that vapor hitting me. Alright guys, well it's a pretty boring ride from here to the house. Uh to Todd's house, so I'm gonna hop off here and, and we'll join you back shortly see you guys in a bit all right guys where the fuck did i i had a glove where did it go oh shit oh man all right guys we're back me and ty just ate some dinner he headed on to the house i'm about to ease on back to mine Pretty good ride today. I am sore as hell though, man. I'm gonna tell you. I kind of feel like maybe my back issues are not being too friendly to me right now. Todd, uh, same way. You know, it's weird that how freaking, um, close me and Todd's problems are like our issues like it's just crazy I mean people say we look alike they mistake us as brothers all the time even though we're not brothers um, we're just friends and um, he's got back issues I got back issues um, I thought you know I used to ride a lot when I was a lot younger um, you know longer distances I guess is what I'm trying to say when I was in my 20s and stuff but you know i'm 37 now and you know started doing the adventure and dual sport stuff and um i'm starting to realize like i just this riding position and yeah, let me close that this riding position and um you know the aggressiveness of riding off-road and all that stuff i'm beginning to think maybe i'm not gonna be able to handle it with my back because you know like i was saying earlier why i'm such a huge advocate of scooters and stuff is simply because you know um uh, like i said i know a lot of people who got medical problems and all this stuff and they've had to do scooters and and i know everybody teases you know scooter riders and stuff but honestly man the truth is i'm cool with everybody that on on two wheels and you know you gotta understand like not everybody who's on a scooter is you know <laughs> poking fun a loser but um no man some of them you know they're old motorcycle riders old i don't mean age wise i mean you know former motorcycle riders who've gotten injuries and stuff or have medical issues and you know they just they can't handle shifting um or any of that kind of stuff me you know i I don't know if I've ever told you guys this on my channel before. Um, when I was like 12 years old, I had to have hip surgery because my left hip was growing wrong. And um, I had to have corrective surgery. And after that, like, I've always had problems with my left knee and hip and ankle, just my whole left leg in general, ever since I had to get it corrected. And um, I tell you, when I'd have to do a lot of shifting, or stuff like that and and i know this sounds ridiculous but i guess i just kind of forgot that because like i said earlier on on some earlier videos you know i went through a period of i don't know three or four years where i just i didn't ride anything on two wheels and um yeah i think i just forgot like how much it aggravates my left hip and how much it aggravates my lower back to have to shift and and do all this adjusting you know with body position and all that i think i just simply forgot and um 
Yeah, and I was reminded today because me and Todd have put on probably close to 300 miles today. And I'm telling you, man, just my fucking back hurts. My damn hip hurts. I just feel like I got, you know, ran over. And um, so I'm really starting to rethink the whole uh, dual sport idea. I mean, yeah, I just, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know if I can, because here's what I'm thinking, like, shit, you know, you know, off-road stuff, it's a matter of time before you, you go down. You know, I mean, everyone knows that. I used to bust my ass all the time on, on the dirt, on dirt bikes and shit. Um, you know, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And I'm thinking like, geez, you know, if, if I'm in this much pain after just riding for 300 miles, like, what the hell, dude? I might fuck myself up for good if I ever wreck off-road repeatedly you know i'm not talking about a one-off thing i'm talking about you know my bike falls on my leg or, or something you know it could fuck me up man like because i already have pre-existing condition shit you know so i don't know me and ty did some soul searching today we sat out during dinner and just talked about you know like hey man uh you know what do you think of the scooter idea <laughs> you know because like he, he kind of hinted at it too and so i was like well shit man what do you think of the scooter idea and he was like honestly bro uh, uh i'm in a lot of pain right now and uh, i'm thinking about scooters and i was like shit me too man i hate to say it because you know i i really really wanted to get into this adventure riding thing but then i you know i begin to realize you know, adventure riding, the way I've always understood it, you know, over the last year, however long I've been looking into it and everything, is, is, you know, at first I was like, adventure riding, man, it's, you know, going to Moab, it's doing all this off-road stuff and climbing stuff and all this. But over the last month, I'll say that I've owned this, well, maybe closer to two months that I've owned this, I slowly started to realize, like, man, I don't have to be off-road climbing shit to, have to be on an adventure ride, you know? Um, hell, you can take gravel roads with a scooter. You can take dirt roads with a scooter. You can take street roads and highways and all that stuff with a scooter. I mean, yeah, sure, maybe you're not going to climb a mountain with a scooter, but... I don't know. I've seen some Honda Ruckus videos where they climbed a freaking mountain. They didn't have any trouble. So um, I'm beginning to realize, and like I said, that's what me and Todd talked about. It's like, bro, we can still do the adventure thing. I mean, who says we have to go climb mountains and stuff? Who says we have to, like, hurt ourselves trying to do this adventure riding thing? And so that's kind of what we agreed on. It's like, you know what? Let's probably... Let's probably ease back um, from the bike side of things. I mean, there's a reason we both stopped riding in the first place. He stopped riding years ago because his back problems. I stopped riding years ago because of my back problems. And here we are again trying to do it and we're older. <laughs> you know, you see what I'm saying? What kind of logic is that? So I think, uh, I don't know, we're gonna give it some more thought. And uh, I'm personally, oh, you know, for me, I'm leaning towards the scooter thing. I mean, I, I really am. And, you know, I'll continue to motor vlog on scooters and all that kind of stuff if I do go that route. But I'm just really starting to feel the physical effects of being back on a motorcycle and shifting and you know, supporting weight that's a little bit more top heavy than a scooter. And I, I'm just, I'm feeling it on my, my left hip and I'm feeling it in my lower back. And like I said, you know, I just, I guess I just, you know how sometimes like you remember stuff and you're like, yeah, I remember it hurt, but it's like you have a problem remembering exactly how much it hurt. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like that, whatever that's called. 
And I'm starting to realize now, like, no, nah, no, nah, I remember now how bad it, it got. Like, you know, there'd be days where I'd go out riding on a good 200 mile ride or something, and, you know, it'd take me two or three days for my back to, to get back to where I, I was feeling all right. You know, it just, it, it, I don't know, it's just, it can get bad sometimes. So, the thing with scooters though, is scooters for me, have always been an upright thing because like I said I've owned mini scooters and a matter of fact that Vespa in my earlier videos when I had my Vespa 150 the only issue I had with that is that I couldn't stretch my legs out just a little bit like they were locked in that stationary sitting position and so I was like okay this is this is cramping up my left hip I can't move my legs nothing but then I got the PCX 150 which if you guys have watched some of the previous videos you know that I didn't have um, that one for too long and then I sent the fairings off to get painted um, and I still had got the damn fairings back and that was like five months ago so I literally have a PCX 150 sitting at the house and it's just the frame and the engine and the electronics there's no fairings which I'm really fucking pissed off about that um, but that scooter, holy shit, comfortable, comfortable as hell. I did a 200 mile ride on that one, no problem. Didn't hurt, didn't, didn't aggravate my back, didn't aggravate my hips, because I could go from a sitting position to kicking my feet out just a little bit. So I'm thinking, you know what, maybe something, not full blown maxi scooter, you know, maxi, I guess stands for maximum, I don't know. I've never known exactly what Maxi, if that's an acronym or whatever, but the big scooters, the touring scooters with the big windshield and all that. I'm not saying I want that, but something around the design of maybe like the Kimco People 200 or, you know, something around, a, a, I don't know, an S-Max or a T-Max or from Yamaha or a PCX 150, something around that size, the 150, cause a 150 cc scooter, look, I, I'm not gonna lie. A 150 cc scooter will blow the doors off this 225. Hands down, it'll stomp it. Red light to red light, it'll blow the doors of it. So in other words, it's got acceleration. It's got top end. You know, you can do 70, 75 miles an hour on a 150 cc scooter. You know, so I mean, you could definitely across the freaking country with a 1cc or 150cc maybe maybe you might not want to on a motorcycle this 150cc but definitely you it's doable on a scooter so between the 150 and 250cc scooter range is kind of what i'm looking at um i want something that's got the panels right it you know where you can put your feet out a little bit you don't have to have them straight down um, so yeah, that's um, that's what I'm. I'm not guaranteeing that's what I'm gonna do yet, guys. But that's what I'm thinking. But that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. It's getting dark out here, and I don't feel like stopping and changing the settings on my GoPro. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Um, if you guys enjoy the content, you know, like, comment, subscribe, questions, anything like that, ask them below. Um, if you do ride scooters, you know, let me know what what. What eased you off motorcycles onto scooters? You know, was it injury? Was it like I, you know, like me, I've got back problems and all this kind of stuff. It's making me rethink it. But yeah. Also, if you would like to further contribute and support to the channel, my Patreon link is below as well as on my end screen of the video. Make sure to stick around to the end screen. It'll show, that's my new one, I just made it. It'll uh, give you a recommended video as well as my most recent video so you guys stay tuned for more videos i will see you guys in the future as always you guys take care bear mask out peace